I apologize ahead of line because you may hear a fan in the background. But I didn't invent heat. So it's not my fault. Act 3, Scene 5, Hole of the Mountain King. <clears throat> Quick throat clear. Sucking on chili dogs. The whole of the mountain king. And so it was that mountain king ran off to join mountain king Huzaini. A woman in tattered cardigan looks furtively at other people around the fire. Do you know that when I first, no, I mean, if this cave were larger, could it, now I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, ah, oh, I've got it. How would you characterize this space, the one we're standing in now? Seems endless. You have no idea how right you are. Decades of mapping and notating, but how can you tell what formal quality makes it seem Endless, you know? Bunch of tunnels. We're surrounded by them. Look at that one up there. Do you know what... No. Let me explain to you what's in that tunnel. You won't be scared. Close your eyes. Will you close your eyes? Sure. Good. Now, you're standing at the top of a rocky peak. A tongue of flame licks the... The shadowy anatomies of... Where are we? Oh, here again. How disappointing. Uh, sorry? No, it's my fault. I shouldn't be so attached to the future. It's always getting in the way of my work. Better to be in the moment, carefully observing and documenting with no attachment. Let me give you an example. I was a grad student studying statistics when I started working with Donald on his project. He said we needed someone with a more analytical mind to do the descriptive writing. Someone who would appreciate the cave descriptions as a real labor, instead of taking their authorial voice for granted. Donald warned me it would be long hours of typing, painstakingly detailed descriptions into the computer, and I put in the hours, believe me, I put in the hours. I've described every facet of this cave in such detail that sometimes I don't know if I'm reading or looking, writing or exploring. Often in the dark and lonely moments, I worry that in my sleep I've transcribed rooms from my dreams into the system. How would we know? They could only be entered with precise, faithful detail. That's all I know how to write, and all I dream about is caves. I only dream of caves. Hmm. A massive gate constructed out of scavenged materials blocks passage down the far side of the spire. Roberta. The kingdom is in peril. Well, what else is new? Where's the kingdom? You're in the throne room. There are three legendary treasures hidden throughout the castle that will restore these ruins to their former glory. What do they look like? She's messing with you, kid. Enchanted jewelry, talismans, a magic mirror that prevents the future. Prevents the future? A magic shield that protects the bearer from age. A magic chest that's always filled with... 
I never went to the university. I was an independent scholar. It means I took to the public libraries like a beachcomber. I studied fairy tales. And then I came to work for Donald. I paid the bills, rubbed leathering elbows with academics, scraped black mold from cave walls. Finally, now I carry the firewood into senescence. The kingdom is in peril! Xanadu? From Citizen Kane? Baffling control panels are sheltered from the elements with a warmed tarp. A cloth-sized wall of knobs and wires looms behind the machine, humming faintly. An electric typewriter is the only easily recognizable component. How do you think we get it started? This old thing? Maybe there's a hand crank round. Oh! It has a run key. Xanadu. Oh. They immediately got me. The Den of Argo? Xanadu, you are staring at the deep something, something. Try blowing on it. Okay, that's worse. Road. <laughs> In blood quick. East West Passage Everywhere You You're in Something Something East West Passage Something everywhere Remove the computer Something? Monument? That doesn't make sense. Bricks? This is very loud. Time for some percussive name. Is she just gonna bang on it? Yeah. <laughs> My portable degauss are with me. That'll get rid of all the gauss. Old systems like this can... This one can build up a remnant magnetic field that sort of warps everything along whatever pattern is settled into it, you know? The degausser clears that up by suddenly shaking the magnetic field around it until it's uniform again. That's how I like to think of it anyway, like shaking a snow globe. Worth a shot! Hole of the Mountain Gink. Tunnel. After. After? Right? Huh.
Press any key to quit. So the lost cause with a piece of junk. Interesting that there are dogs barking. <clears throat> the whole of the mountain king. Bizarre. And what was that about Lula? Maybe Donald knows how to clear it up a bit. <clears throat> it's been like a week since I played this. I don't remember why I'm in a cave. Maybe more than a week. Was I, oh, was I born to be in a cave? I'm not looking for Amy, I'm looking for Donald. Donald. So you've seen it for yourself. What's left of it? Pretty busted. The chalky bones of a beautiful dream. But you can see what it once was, can't you? There was so much more to it. Ornate labyrinths of memory, exhaustively simulated parallel cave ecosystems, real artificial intelligence built on sophisticated neural network algorithms. The birds in the forest could flock in three dimensions. The bats could learn to sing. Then it began to crumble when the strangers came. First we only heard them, walking heavily through the caves, dragging things around, hammering and clattering their tools. Sometimes we heard working songs. Never close enough to make out real voices, just their echoes cascading wordlessly in the tunnels. Then we caught a glimpse of one. Shouldn't be telling you about this. They're dangerous. They're strange. I should never have tried to outwit them. They were always too much for me. But it's too late now. If I'd listened to Lula, I... Lula? Lula Chamberlain? Yes, of course. Do you know her? How do you know her? It was a long time ago. All this... Just look at it. No, she's gone now. She's left. We built this together, did you know? Lula, Joseph, and I. Lula is gone from here. But Donald... Still in there. In Xanadu. I don't know where Lula is now. Or how to get away from here. Or how to get there from here. Or how to unwind that damn tangled highway, but Xanadu, before its ruin, was faultless as an oracle, a shrine to perfect simulation. Until... but maybe... Those weird interlopers destroyed my Xanadu. Perhaps they know how to fix it. It might be dangerous. I've sent many eager seconds... I've sent many eager seconds to negotiate with them to repair my masterpiece. Back there, that tunnel. Push back the vines, crawl out into the darkness, watch your step. After a while, you'll feel the terrain change beneath your hands and knees, from rock to crystal, then to mud. Then you'll be out. That's where the strangers come from. Now leave me alone. I still have a bit of mold in my pipe and a few dreams left. Boys out here smoking mold. <clears throat> Where the strangers come from. In Mausoleum. Where's blue? Well, this can't be right. Looks like an old church. It's muddy. Yeah, that's what he said. Crystals and then mud. Okay. I want to stay outside. Okay. I'll stay with him. We can look for lizards. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll make it quick. 
Where's blue? Epitaph is engraved in the stone marker. Brad Morris' generous disposition will be missed. It's written in white chalk. HT8191T. Fill date June 29th. Notes of Almond. Fill date could be the date the grave was filled in. Notes of Almond. The immediate thing I thought of was Cyanide. Not sure what this is, unless he's a Terminator. Naswen and Tinsley Low. We think you two would really have liked each other. <laughs> Weird finish. Oh, somebody's eating these bodies, aren't they? So the first one tasted like almond. This one had a weird finish. Rebecca Elliot, always had a far off look, probably still does. After taste of rainwater. Paolo Perdicini. Sorry, Pedercini or Jonathan McManus. <laughs> Sweet and fungal. Somebody's eating these borpses. Kyriakos Corsaris would have wanted it this way. <laughs> Maple and turpentine. Probably shouldn't eat turpentine. Kulshar should have said something. Sense of for tastes like a sense of foreboding. Unknown seemed reasonable. Huh. Nice cover story, kid. I thought it was a doctor. Is that guy your boyfriend? Nah, what's a boyfriend anyway? It's a word people use because everyone else does. Doesn't mean anything to me. He's my cricket. See? It means something. It's specific. I want to be specific. I think you are. It's the middle of the night and here you are in a graveyard. Any other kid your age would be in bed. You've just got to make choices and own them. <clears throat> Think I was born this foxy? I came off the assembly line about a half foot shorter and all gray, no eyes. They were going to have us clearing out the old mine. Doesn't matter what you look like. Under all that rock and water, a bunch of gray shadows shoveling and hammering invisibly at the wall straining the tunnels. Johnny found some gear, an old tape player. We hid away in an underwater cave and listened to it over and over, and we knew we weren't miners. We slipped out onto the road, just these two featureless shadows, and ever since that night we've been detailing, coloring in, specifying. I feel more like myself every day. Who's Julian? Sure, some people are born into a family. Nothing wrong with that. What'd you find in there? It wasn't... What's going on? You look flushed, old man. Doesn't matter. Okay, we got what we need. Let's go. They be eaten. They be eaten boyos. All of the Mountain King. Donald. Trace an orbit round the road and close your eyes with a holy dread. For we on mold and whiskey fed and drank from rivers down below. We found your strangers. 
we know how to fix your damn machine. I'm not sure it was worth it. Oh, soon the visions will return. What have you found? Why would Shannon know these things? Oh no, I'm thinking of Junebug, sorry. Say so you need to scrape the mold off the timing crystal. But the mold, of course. Too much mold on the timing crystal would send the simulation adrift. Each moment lived out by a out of sync. By all means, yes, clean the crystal. Shenadu. Oh, keep going to Xanadu. If this plays out the way I think it's going to play out, Roberta, oh right, I already talked to her, where we never get to see what happened to Conway and Shannon in the barn or whatever, the church, and I'm going to love that, because you're just supposed to infer that they encountered these cannibal people and were disgusted and somehow made it out alive. See anything that looks like a timing crystal? Right here behind the control panel. It's filthy. Right, we're supposed to scrape off this black moldy stuff. Weird. Just following instructions. Here we go. Act three's a long one. Xenadu. Xanadu. Xanadu, Xanadu. At the end, at end of road. Little shack? You're standing at the end of a road before a small brick building. Around you is a forest. Check out the building. Park Service. <clears throat> Get the lantern. That's not something you can enter? In Forest. I feel like I know this song. Tonight we're gonna get on the floor. You are in open forest with a deep valley to one side. Can we climb a tree? <clears throat> I don't think much is to be achieved by that. Well, Xanadu, you're not the one playing the game. Can we dig a hole? I'd have to go south if I just went north. We just entered. What's it typing over here? Oh, if it's a maze, that's different. Well, we went north. And it said to which direction? Was the cliff or whatever? Let's go west. You're in a forest. 
Lula is here, soldering replacement components in a small handmade on handmade radio. Talk to her. Ask Lula how she is doing. Hi, Donald. I'm getting the strangest interference out here. I've been tuning the radio circuits gradually as we go, swapping capacitor values and tweaking resistor networks. It was working for a while, but everything I can pick up sounds so distant and muffled. Lula hands you the radio. Well, maybe you'll have better luck. You're good at this stuff, just don't forget to give it back. Okay, so if she's west, let's go east. This should take us back to the path, though. You're in a forest. Joseph is here now. Tapping with a small stylus on a modified pocket braille slate. A small gray kitten, no more than a few weeks old, dozes comfortably on top of his backpack. What say you? Donald, I was just transcribing your footsteps. It sounded like... Joseph runs his finger along the index card he's been tapping on from right to left. Long, weary song, drearily gone, drearily gone. You beat a melancholy shuffle through these woods, Donald. I've been noting down the sound of the forest with an ear for speech and an inborn filter for poetry. I su suppose so. Maybe it's me being melancholy after all. I'm eager to see what the poetic subsystem makes of these punched cards. Further north? Is that the end? At edge of hole. So there's like a sinkhole? Or a pit to Tartarus? You're at the edge of a massive hole. The dirt gives way to rock as the ground sinks into darkness. The computer tied to your upper back slickens with sweat in the afternoon sun. The rope slung round your shoulder has slipped under the strap of your backpack, digging uncomfortably against your collarbone. <laughs> ah! I only understand you as far as wanting to yell. Yell any pirates down there. No response. Sorry kid, you're batting zero today. Kentucky Route Zero. At least we know there are no pirates. Can I shine the lamp? The lamp is now on. The lamplight only reaches a few yards down the hole where the rock is coated in slimy black mold. You can tell that the walls are too slick to climb safely without assistance. Try using a rope to climb down safely. Tie rope to tree. The rope is tied snugly to a tree trunk. Down. Your feet slip a few times on the slimy rock, but you remain stable. Lula and Joseph descend carefully after you. Xanadu is very loud. <laughs> In bed quilt. A cave. Scanner somber. You are in bed quilt. A long east-west passage with holes everywhere. Joseph and Lula remove the computer equipment they are carrying on their backs and begin setting up. That's the last trip, so everyone's down here now. Everything's down here now. Say something back. You make an awkward joke. Don't be so morbid. Lula looks pensive. Ask her where the treasure is. If I knew that, we wouldn't have set up down here. I know you think this environment will help our project get us in touch with deep romantic reverence for some kind of profound natural spookiness, but I was more comfortable in our lab. The university picked the worst time to cut our funding. Typical institutional stinginess and academic politics. I mean, I felt like we were getting really close to something. Anyway. I don't know if it's sustainable down here, you know, to live and work here together. What's the gear? Sure, Donald, we may as well take inventory. 
I got the tape machine and synthesizer parts we borrowed from the School of Music. It's all tuned up to my voice, so we won't have to tighten so much. Joseph has his slate and the punched cards. He's transcribed from poems we read him. He's got the typewriter and the paper tape reader. Joseph looks uncomfortable, and you've got the CRT display. How's your back holding up? Literally, a CRT display would be so heavy. Jealous. Hey Donald, can you help me uh, wire up these generators? I'll assemble the synthesizer, but I could use some help with the serial interface if you have time. You're an unfamiliar echo from a tunnel to the east. Well, Joseph clearly wants to talk to me in private. And Lula just needs help. So I'll help wire up the generators. I appreciate it, Donald. I'm not much of an electrician, you know. Joseph hands you a bundle of wires. His kitten curls up on a spool of cabling. Listen, the three of us had a good thing for a minute, wouldn't you say, up at the old place before it got ugly? I'm saying we came down here to work, to really do it. Xanadu. And I mean, we gotta be rational about this. All three of us have got to put our feelings aside for a bit and be rational. Do you know what I'm saying? That is creepy. Joseph wipes his brow with a dusty sleeve. Seems down here we're all strangers. Permanently strange. You're interrupted by the ominous echo of grating scraping from the sound say, sound from the east louder than before. What the hell was that? Let's check it out. <clears throat> In a tunnel. <gasps> I just made a huge mistake. I just freshly tattooed myself and then I just scratched where I just freshly tattooed and it hurt. <laughs> you rush down the tunnel with Joseph and Lula close behind. <clears throat> How do you like all this, kid? Kind of boring, but I like boring stuff sometimes. It's a lot of reading, but I'm really good at that anyway. The tunnel narrows, and soon you find yourself crawling on your hands and knees. Navigating the tunnel gradually becomes more awkward. The smooth rock gives way to jagged, crystalline surfaces. And then to mud? Scratches and taps echo from one end of the tunnel. Some short and piercing, some slower and groaning as if dampened by water. The tunnel opens into a large room. Hello, skeleton. Zzz. You're in a large irregular chamber. The walls, floors, and ceiling are covered with crystalline projections. Strangers are here, scraping black mold from the crystals. They look up when you enter. One of them seems about to speak. The stranger reaches for a box he's carrying and presses a plastic button. The box wears to life and crackly voice blurts something unintelligible, then slows to a deep gurgle. He looks at his companions momentarily in confused disappointment, then he returns his awful gaze to you. Joseph flees through a tunnel to the north. Lula flees through a tunnel to the northeast. Run northeast. Lula's headlamp scans across the northern passage as you run. Soft shadows loom perplexingly from floor to ceiling. You feel around to distinguish shadows from crystal, but eventually you find yourselves cornered. You've hit a dead end. Let's find a way out of here. That's not a verb I recognize. Look for escape. You can't see any such thing. Listen, I think they've gone back to work. They seem strange somehow. Maybe they've forgotten about us. It's been one second. All right, let's try to pass them quickly now. Don't make eye contact, then we'll find our way back to the equipment. In bed quilt. You are in bed quilt. A long east-west passage with holes everywhere. Lula is here, panting for breath. 
Did they follow us? Where's Joseph? I know, but never mind. I don't want to think about it. We should. I guess we should wait for Joseph here. This is where he'll go, right? May as well. Time passes. Lula nervously runs her hand along a vein in the cave wall. Guess we can wait for an hour or so. Shifting, fluttering sound grows louder from one of the tunnels. Five disoriented bats stumble through your lantern light and off into an adjacent passage. Let's go look for him. I only stand you as far as wanting to search. We have to be more specific. With the equipment. Various computer and audio equipment cast angular shadows into the tunnels as you scan slowly across the pile. You select a tunnel at random. Your lantern illuminates several sets of footprints on the moldy cave floor, but they're impossible to identify. Joseph climbs down from the rope still tied above. That damn sound, those damn voices. I don't even know what direction I was running. I wove through that network of tunnels. I ran my hand along the wall, always turning left, but every turn and every rock felt the same. For all I knew, I was running in circles. Finally, I ended up here. But I hid. I panicked. I heard you talking, but I didn't think I could trust my senses. But listen, there's one thing I have to tell you. While I was out there lost in the tunnels and caves, I came across the Zero, and I had no idea. It's like a real place. They pick up garbage, they deliver mail, they go to work and to church, but it has an awful kind of emptiness. Wandering through, I heard horrible echoes. Weird images got burned in my mind's eye. A television, a scarecrow, a crystal, a feather, a sandwich, a CRT monitor, a bottle, an anchor. Lou looks down at her feet. Donald, you've heard the same damn stories I have, but it's different. Doesn't matter now, damn it. I'm leaving. To hell with all of it. You shout something at Joseph about the project you were working on together. You'll, you'll die in these damn cold caves, and what about those men? You know they'll come back. Shout something at Joseph about going deeper into the caves. Did you hear their voices? They're not... They'll find you, but not me. I'm going back to the surface. Stop! Your stupid fight is ringing through the whole damn cave. Joseph is right. Can't stay here. I'm leaving too. But I'm not going back to the surface. I'm taking my station way and I'm heading down to the zero. Plead with Lulu about your continued collaboration. I'll send you this tape when I'm done recording, I'll put it in the mail, and then you can come see what your damn machine does with it. Abandoned by your collaborators, your confidants, your companions, the only two among your colleagues with whom you've ever trusted the gifts of your friendship. Pretty thick. Sounds like Beardo had his heart broken. You wonder what tunnels alone dragging along the components of your unrealized masterpiece calming the underground passages for a new site in which to realize your vision. Sounds like a genius. Wordy. I had a guy who came into the shop once with a bunch of old radios and computers and stuff. Real junk. I think he collected it going down alleys or something. Anyways. It's all broken. He asked me if I could get the tubes out and clean them up. The vacuum tubes. So I pulled every vacuum tube I could find through the rest out. And I went over them with some rubbing alcohol, cleaned the leads. I used some nail polish remover on the glass. They did a pretty good job. He came back in the next day and I laid it all out on a towel for him so he could check it out. Got the towel from my Aunt Remedios. And like everything with her, it's really kind of nice, you know. It's red and it has gold embroidery around the edges. I guess it was a little too nice. This guy got all excited by the presentation, kind of circled it, and up 
observed each tube from a distance, moving his head around in weird quick bobs like a pigeon. Then he started just lecturing at nobody in particular about the history of vacuum tubes. He talked for an hour. He went on a few dates, but nothing really came... We went on a few dates, but nothing really came of it. Turns out he was kind of boring. Hole of the Mountain King. After what may have been years, you stumble out of a tunnel into a cavernous open space. Stalactites adorn the ceiling like grotesques. In the center of the room is an enormous rocky spire. This is where you will set up your equipment and establish your legacy. Now is the time to continue your work. You may hire a new research assistant, assign assistants to a task, or sleep until tomorrow. Hired Marianne, who studies fine art. and discard centuries of exhaustive data on the uniformity of cause and effect. Now is the time to continue your work. Well, the more I do, the more mold. Weaver's mass. adjustments to the echolocation algorithm. Bats now fly normally instead of getting hung up on other wings and clustering around like horribly leathery tumbleweeds. Weaver widens tunnel slightly to reduce the need for extra crouch commands. Greasy black mold is collecting on the computer's equipment. Now is the time to continue your work. Okay, this seems like it's gonna take forever and I really, really gotta pee. I'll be right back.
forward. I was about to explode completely. Because I've had to pee for years. But now I'm back and I have more meatloaf than you can imagine. Higher. Roberta. A sign. Transcription. Two. Probably should have hit three. <laughs> Marianne summarizes the migratory patterns of bats through tunnels. Weaver carefully transcribes the sounds of dripping water and all their variations over a period of several hours. Roberta types up some lurid imagery from a dream journal. Intruders! The intruders are doing... The strangers are doing something to the equipment, but you can't make out what. You hide behind a rock until they leave. With trepidation, you emerge from your hiding place hours later. Now is the time to continue your work. I'm not convinced this is getting us any closer to the zero. Mold coverage down to zero. You may hire a new research. Uh. Oh no. Oh no. Andrew. I forget what he was. the lamp. <laughs> One of them, the mathematician named Weeper, follows the stranger to the tunnels. He doesn't return, but neither do they. Years pass, mold accumulates. You and remaining research assistants take to burning disused equipment in the center of the room. The black mold is intensely flammable and makes an excellent catalyst. It leaves behind a sweet narcotic perfume. One night you have visitors, outsiders, different ones, then later that night an old friend. You really did go deeper into the cave. Premature end of file, press any key to quit. So Lula's coming back. Now I have meatloaf. This scene keeps on going. Or this act. Really did go deeper into the caves. Well, you were easy enough to find. That a few of your fumer, fumer <laughs> former assistants, one can't help but hear things. So this is what became of our project. If I'd made some additions, Joseph stole the data tapes for the first half and I had some blank spots to fill. Yes, I know. He published his version. Actually, I'm sorry. He purchased... Mm. He published his version. Actually, I'm sorry to report that it's a bit tediously sentimental. Found your doctor. Oh, good, yes. You're looking not well, to be honest. You smell like a distillery. Have you been drinking? So you found the address data, just pass it over to Donald here. Donald, will you be a deer and crunch these numbers? We're looking for sort out looking to sort out a street name collision. Looking 
to sort out a street named Collision, Dogwood Drive. What a weird sentence. I should only be an hour or so. Andrew will carry it over to... I'll be at the bureau for the rest of the night. Just market private materials for the attention of senior clerk Chamberlain. How do we get to the bureau from here? The bridge. Yes, the bridge. Through the gate over there. Now we too recede into history. Good night, Donald. <clears throat> Meet me at the bureau, and we'll get you on your way. Head counterclockwise to the cathode ray, then turn around when... Then it's just clockwise until you find the bureau. More like meatloaf. backpack leans against the rock. It's full of empty wine bottles and library books. There's blue. truck on. That was a long one. What? Whoa. Cat carrier. Okay, so I have to go to the cathode ray then. It's a loop. Didn't she say go to the cathode ray? A dozen children are gathered in a shallow, dry basin to the side of the road. Oh no. They're seated on overtone torn pots and pans that range the three configurations. One group of five children are clustered to the right. One group are arranged loosely in the center, all facing an older girl who sits on three pants stacked together. The boy at the head of the arrangement looks sternly down on another child. A younger boy kneeled on the stone floor without a pot to sit on. A spare stock pot, perhaps belonging to the younger boy, is set to the side. Ezra seats himself in the center. A few of the other children nod or wave at Ezra. 
The older girl takes a wide green leaf from the floor next to her and pretends to read off a list of charges. The younger child is accused of making agreements for trading card exchanges which he is not able to honor. The judge asks for a witness to testify. A boy describes the participants and events depicted on the trading card he was to receive and makes related claims about the defendant's nature. Testify for him. I sort of makes up a story about the defendant's extenuating circumstances. Few other witnesses testify to the defendant's character. The jury is sequestered a few feet away and returns with a guilt, 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 ver verdict of not guilty. <laughs> the groups of children reconfigure themselves and a new trial begins with former defendant now as the judge. Yes, take over, please. Oh. That's where I was supposed to go. Oh my god, it keeps going. But not tonight it doesn't. <laughs> 